A supreme cattle, chases a girl, begging for his attention, but she continues on her way, and calls him annoying, but the guy doesn't stop, until they pass a football field and a ball is kicked in his direction, and everything goes to hell. Slow motion. At that moment the chasing cattle gets its name, Wataru Seijo, and the chased girl as Aika Natsukawa, and when the ball touches him, a strange shock occurs and changes the whole atmosphere of the environment, and Aika asks if Wataru is okay, he replies that yes, and she soon gives the guy a moral lesson, saying that if he wasn't a weird stalker this wouldn't have happened, and in the end, he makes the weird decision to be normal and stop chasing after her all the time, well, they go to class, and a classmate tells Wataru that he heard that he was divinely punished this morning because of his persecutions. And she says that if he continues like this, Aika will only continue to hate him even more, and he shows indifference to that, K is then strange and asks if the guy has a fever, then the teacher arrives in class, and also strange the change sudden from Wataru, the guy is very happy sitting in his chair, usually he would already be bothering Aika. And in the break, Wataru passes by Aika, and she tells him to stay away from her, but the guy was just going to the bathroom, thinks of a cocky girl, well, getting there he is pulled by his friends, and they ask what's wrong wrong between him and Aika, after all the crazy guy was always drooling over her. But he says he's not so, into her, anymore, but he still likes her enough to want to support her in whatever she wants to do, and well, back in the classroom, Wataru stands up, and Aika asks where he's going going, and the ex-cattle just replies that he's going to the mess hall. And his friend was strange about such an attitude, even because the usual Wataru would be begging Aika to go along with him, and seeing this change they began to believe that Wataru would have gotten tired of being rejected. And in the break, a girl from the neighboring room appears and sits next to him, he asks who she would be, and the girl introduces herself as Rina Aizawa, but he doesn't seem to be that into dialogue, and says that her presence there is the bothering. Aizawa then sets foot, and the next day, one of his friends finds out about it and calls him an idiot, and says that he has a little visitor, in this case, it was Aizawa herself, and she appears with that upward vibe like yesterday, but Wataru doesn't seem to find it so natural, and it's strange that a pretty girl is paying attention to him. And his friend's grappling comes back, and then Aika appears in the room, Wataru tries to talk to her, but the girl answers him dryly, as if she was angry, she then leaves her things and leaves, and Aizawa comments that maybe his presence there gave Aika the wrong impression. And in physical education class, Wataru gets distracted by Aika, and ends up compromising his whole team, thinks of a sly nut, and after class, K goes up to him and calls him a womanizer, because the guy was looking at them all the time in physical education. And then, she starts to talk more about Aizawa, and talks about her being very attached to her ex-boyfriend from the second year, and some, little people, she knows, said that the two had started dating since the first year of high school. And Wataru says that she would make a good spy, aka, caregiver, well, K says that Aizawa's ex-boyfriend is in class B, and then the nosy guy goes into the living room to see the guy, and they're talking about women, until one of the guys asks her ex which woman he has his eye on. And Aramura replies that it's Aika, and back to the room, K notices the strange Wataru, and goes up to him and asks if he's thinking about Aizawa, Wataru says yes and says he also wants to ask the two something, but Aizawa arrives just in time, apparently wanting to talk with him. But it doesn't have to be in private, so she joins them, and Kay asks her why she broke up with her ex, and the girl is amazed at the whole situation, because she didn't even know that Kay was aware of her breakup. And even though she knows, Aizawa is amazed that this question is so sudden. However, Kay says that it wouldn't be a problem for her to tell, after all, she's in the conquest of Wataru now, well, Aizawa says that her personality didn't like Aramura so much, but K says that he didn't have good taste, and that now things will get better since she has Wataru. And Aika participates in the offenses against Aizawa's ex, but the girl feels bad and leaves, and Wataru goes after her to talk, but Aizawa says he doesn't need to apologize, but he says he didn't expect the other two to be so insensitive, and well, Aizawa is aware of a curious fact, Wataru doesn't usually talk about Aika around her. And he says he doesn't do that out of a certain chivalry behavior, it would be unethical to keep talking about other girls to her, but Aizawa insists on talking about it, and asks if he likes Aika, and Wataru says yes, but he feels colder about it, on account of being rejected too much. And then he changes the subject and asks her about their relationships, and she says that she broke up with Aramura because he complimented Aika in a rather suggestive way, and for revenge she decided that he would have to feel in his skin what did, but it only caused more misunderstandings and mistakes. Well, Wataru starts talking about being rejected yet again, the girl completely belittled him, and to make matters worse, 
Her boyfriend came in next wanting to hit him, and in the midst of the confusion he fell backwards and landed face first on her breasts from Aika, and ended up getting slapped in the face. And he says that's how he fell in love with her, Aizawa is amazed, what a strange way to fall in love. But he explains that right after that, Aiko defended him, and told the girl that making fun of someone else's feelings was something very low. And when Aizawa was already excited about the story, he says that actually that's not what happened, the guy is a troll bro, he says that in reality, he fell and Aika reached out to him, and from then on, he never forgot this kindness. And with that he says that he became a lunatic for Aika, and calls her the goddess of humanity that must be supported, however Aizawa says that he thought he wanted to date Aika, but Wataru says no, because he would only be a nuisance if you think so. So he'll just support her from a distance, as he can't get anything serious with her, and Aizawa finds that a bit frightening, but can make sense of his way of thinking. As for the incident in the classroom, Wataru says he'll scold K, but she says she doesn't need to, as K probably noticed her ulterior motives and only said that to protect Aika. Wataru goes back to talking about her ex, and says that his attitudes are not exclusive to him, all men are a bit like that too. The next day, K and Aika realize that Aizawa is back with his ex, and K is sorry for Wataru, after all he was rejected by Aika and also by Aizawa, poor thing, well, the two go to him to talk about it, but he says he's glad they made up, and that he no longer expected to have anything with Aizawa. And then his friends show up their toe takes one with the face of the crazy, and asks if he got rejected by Aika again, and Wataru mocks back, saying he's having his divorce proceedings with her. And later at home, he really realizes that Aika is not on his level, and that it is better to forget about her for good, until her doorbell rings, and it was her, he invites her in and asks how she found him, Aika says that she got his address from her friends, and Wataru then wonders why she's visiting. But before she answers, the guy already slips up and says there's nobody home, and then apologizes, because he didn't mean it with ulterior motives. Well, she explains that she was there to understand what was going on with him, because he wasn't being a weird stalker anymore, and coming from him that would be something abnormal. And then, he suddenly asks her out, like he always did, but she says he could not accept given the situation. And he says he's used to this rejection, so no matter how much she rejects him, he won't be discouraged, and in the middle of the conversation another girl arrives, she's his older sister and student counselor, well, Wataru explains that Aika was there to take care of some matters and was about to leave. Wataru accompanies Aika home, and on the way she asks him what he was about to talk about before his sister showed up, and he explains that he was going to say that he will stop chasing her and intends for them to be just classmates, then he asks if she had any friends to introduce to him. But when she hears that, she gets angry and runs away, yeah, the girl was jealous of the guy, well, the next day her accent was changed further away from Aiko's accent, and Kay asks if he got upset with her that, and she says it would be better that way as it will keep him from bothering her. And Kay tells him to at least take responsibility, because the fact that he got close to Aika, made other girls abandon her because of his pursuits, and he then remembers his slogan, support Aika. All this chasing he did ended up limiting Aiko's friendship to just him and Kay, because other people didn't want to get close. And when he hears that, he thinks that he needs to stay away from her, because that would mean supporting her, well, when the bell rings, Wataru notices that Aika only gets along even with Kay, and then he walks away going to the break, at that moment one of his friends goes there to ask if he won't run after Aika. And after that, he goes to walk and reflect on everything that is happening between him and Aika, until suddenly Shinomiya appears, that would be one of the members of the school's moral and discipline committee, and the girl scolds him for the day that he scared a girl, and he remembers that he had bumped into a girl while running after Aizawa so he apologizes, and Shinomiya asks him if he had ulterior motives talking to that girl. He replies no, but only handsome guys could talk to an innocent girl in such a deserted place, and says he should have known that he would make her scared, but Shinomiya says that under normal circumstances his attitude should be praised. And she explains that the girl was just scared because she doesn't feel so much confidence in men in general, but Wataru says that any girl would have acted the same, and then he turns his back to leave, but Shinomiya pulls him back and says that need to talk to him. She makes it clear to Wataru that she doesn't believe he had ulterior motives with the girl when talking to her, as she feels that he would not be such a guy, Shinomiya reveals that the girl he had bumped into was Yuyu Anatomy, and she would be another one of the same committee that she is part of. She describes the girl as a hardworking and serious person, and says that all the other members of the committee follow the same line, however every now and then they feel pessimistic, and then Wataru says that they might be trying to match Shinomiya's level, but when they fail they are sad. But she shyly declines the compliment, and he asks if she's worried about her team, 
and she says yes, and since she's not able to do anything to help them, she feels like she's part of the problem, and to make matters worse, when she goes to try to encourage them they reply that they can't be as good as her as she is amazing around them. Wataru understands her feeling, but says he understands his teammates, we are usually not used to being encouraged by our superior. And so he advises her to tell them not to get carried away by these things, it should certainly comfort them, Wataru believes that her peers probably don't want her to stoop to their level, but rather keep pulling them up positively as she leads the way. All. She finally understands what must be done, and apologizes for having made him keep her company during the whole break, he then says goodbye and turns his back, and she remembers that she had not asked his name, and for some time reason unknown, he gives a false name, Yamazaki. Well, Wataru is leaving his house with his sister, and she asks if he got back to talking to Aika after that last day, and he says he had normal conversations with classmates, his sister then says he won't be successful, with girls never like that, and suddenly they spot Aika too, and his sister takes his luggage and tells him to go have a decent conversation with Aika, and halfway through they exchange half a dozen words, and arriving at school Wataru already says goodbye to Aika saying that would go in another direction. Well, at that moment Kei appears saying that Shinomiya is upset for some reason, and when they arrive in the room, she appears to exchange a few words with him, she greets him calling him Yamazaki, but she was already aware that he had lied about her name. And then, she says she wants to have a little chat with him at halftime, after which the real Yamazaki appears behind him, angry at him for using his name falsely. Well, Kei asks how Wataru met Shinomiya, and he says that a lot of things happened and in the end, he used a fake name, but it seems that Kei admires this senpai a lot, so she calls him an idiot for screwing things up with her. Giving the time for the break, Wataru is already prepared for the conversation, the guy takes some snacks for them, to see if there will be an easier forgiveness, and then, Shinomiya asks why he lied his name to her, and he responds that it would be problematic to have your name marked by the chairman of the Morals and Discipline Committee. And Shinomiya says that by doing that, he threw his problems on his friend, but Wataru says that Yamazaki liked that, but Shinomiya doesn't understand why one student likes that situation and the other doesn't, so Wataru says that Anatomy understood everything. And Anatomy explains that Yamazaki liked this situation because he thinks Shinomiya is pretty, she gets embarrassed and tells Anatomy to stop saying weird things, and tells Wataru that names shouldn't be faked. He apologizes and gets up to leave. They tell him to wait, because that wasn't the central topic of the conversation, and then Anatomy apologizes for being scared by him that day, after all, he wanted to help her with those heavy paperwork, but she got things wrong. And she also says that she will make an effort to lose this excessive fear of men, he then wishes her good luck and again leaves the room, and suddenly Kay calls him to the room, and shows him Aika full of friends. And so he decides to stay there, so as not to disturb Aika, when suddenly he receives a message asking him to go to the student council room, and when he gets there, his sister says that she needs his help to gather some related materials. To the summer school visiting tour, and since they're out of time she says, any help will do, and asks for your help. He decides to help, but says that any help could be done by anyone else, but she wants his help because he is better with administration. And out of nowhere she comments on the time he faked his age to get a part-time job, at which point her teammates start making fun of him, calling him a little delinquent. Well, in the end he turned in a good job, and everyone praised his proficiency, but Wataru asks if she doesn't think about calling him again tomorrow, and she says no, and that she'll buy him a plus 18 magazine, to make up for it. Job he had that day, and he likes the idea. Meanwhile, Shinomiya talks to Anatomy about Wataru, and Anatomy is under the impression that he would be disappointed in her, so she asks Shinomiya if she should have told him that it would get over her insecurity about men. And Shinomiya says that it's fine, and that she didn't do anything too much, well, Aika seems to be getting along with the crowd now, and her new friends want to go over to her house, so they can see what a cute little sister Aika has. And then Wataru also appears, and Kei asks if he wouldn't like to go to Aika's house too, but he says that mere mortals like him could never enter a place of residence of a goddess like her. And a friend of his appears by his side, making fun of him, and Aika says that she wouldn't let her sister near him, well, in the middle of class, one of her friends suggests that this meeting at her house take place this weekend, and she accepted. However, Wataru doesn't seem to be in the mood to go, but Aika appears behind him and tries to ask if he's going to go to her house too, but Shinomiya appears out of nowhere and interrupts the conversation to talk to Wataru. She begins by thanking him for the advice he gave her about her committee team, and said that he managed to help them, however, another problem arises, Yu Yu is depressed because she thinks he would be disappointed in her, because of that incident between them. However, Wataru says that it's okay for Anatomy to want to overcome her insecurities, 
but Shinomiya corners him and asks his real opinion on Anatomy's actions. And he says that she wasn't just apologetic because of him, she would actually be pissed off at herself for rejecting someone else's kindness out of insecurity. The only point he criticizes is the fact that she took Shinomiya along to talk to him, as that brought her the security she doesn't have in herself, in the end, she would be a kind of mascot for Shinomiya. And Shinomiya in turn, praises Wataru's power to read people, and finally, he asks to leave and leaves. Finally, summer arrives, and Wataru, upon arriving in the classroom, Go is relieved that they put an air conditioner in there, and then Kei appears and greets him, only he says he is uncomfortable that she is talking to him in such inappropriate clothing. But she says that's the school's summer uniform, and then he asks about the weekend at Ika's, and when she was going to talk about it, the teacher appears and tells everyone to go to their seats, and Kay checks her out the photo she took at Ika's house, she realizes that she is sad. So she asks Wataru if he already talked to Ika today, but he said no and it's better to keep it up, so he doesn't spoil her friendships, besides, Wataru says he prefers to stay away so he can get a better look at Ika and the uniform of her summer. And Kay stands there teasing him by calling him a pervert, well, after they get back from P.E., Wataru's friend comments on the weekend at Aika's house, and shows some pictures of her cute little sister, and then Wataru sends messages to his sister pretending to be your friend, just to make a little mess. Well, he gets a message from his sister in the sequel, where she's quite blunt in saying that she won't need his help with any reports today. Already in the living room, Wataru is going to eat his lunch, when suddenly Yamazaki falls on top of him and comments on having met a girl named Koga, who is even there in the room with them he said he met her on the basketball team. Yamazaki then takes him along with him so they can talk to the girls, and Koga says that he has been very quiet lately, and asks if he would be antisocial, and then Wataru says that he sits at the front of the room and in the corner, that is, it's obvious that he is. Well, Koga asks about his relationship with Aika, and asks if they've ever done those grown-up things, and he replies that he doesn't even know where her house is, and then Yamazaki starts giving Wataru that basic downgrade, which by his turn returns the offense, however, Yamazaki says that he is popular with the girls. And they even asked him out, and Wataru asks who it would be, and he says it's Okamura, a girl from class A, but Koga already takes the boy's hopes away, saying that the girl probably wasn't serious. And then she changes the subject and asks Wataru about Aizawa, and asks if the jokes of big people happen to her, but he says no, because Aizawa is very dedicated to senpai of the committee, and well, during the talk to Aika arrives and pulls Wataru aside. And he notices that she is angry about something, and thinks about what it could be, but he can't come to any conclusion, and then Aika starts to approach him and asks what he was doing talking to those girls. And Wataru already starts to suspect her, but Aika tells him not to get things wrong and runs out of the room, and then Kei nudges him and asks what happened, and he just says he's trying to understand Aika's anger with him because for him it doesn't make much sense for her to be mad at him for talking to other girls. And he finds this attitude so cute that he wants to hug her, and Kay already starts to realize his true intentions, and suddenly one of the school committee members appears and asks Wataru to talk, and he asks what Wataru thinks about him himself, and he replies that he is a simple student, an ordinary person. And then the guy says that he heard about Wataru being obsessed with a girl for years, and asks why he stopped being that way, but Wataru replies that he just decided to stop wasting energy on unnecessary things. He then asks if he told his sister about these things, but Wataru says that his sister is the least interested in knowing things about his life, so there would be no point in telling her anything. However, the guy says that Keed is actually really sorry for his change, because he believes that she was responsible for it. After all when he was little his sister said things like, you're just a low-level person, and Wataru does not deny that this is in fact true. And the guy says it's the first time he's seen Keed complain about something, and seeing this whole problem, Wataru says he'll take care of this matter at home, but the crazy guy there had already arranged a place for them to talk about it, and on the way they talk about the situation, and at one point Senpai waves to a girl, who reciprocates with a smile. And then, Wataru asks if he is aware of his beauty, and Senpai replies that he is, but he has already let himself be carried away by it and ended up having a very bad experience, and the person responsible for getting him out of rock bottom would have been his sister. And on the way Wataru already feels bad for having to look at someone in his family sad, but getting there, he discovers that Senpai lied to his sister too, he said that Shinomiya would come talk to her. And well, Wataru asks if she would be depressed about something, but she tries to talk it out, but he says that someone told him about her being bad about something, and to try to test her, he asks Keed to list 10 good qualities about it. Him, if she doesn't get it it's a sign that she's depressed. He gives her 10 seconds to start listing the qualities, but she can't, 
so he changes the strategy, and asks her to list 10 common qualities of his, then she sends several, and with that he gets the information he wanted, his sister thinks he's an ordinary guy. Wataru then tells her not to blame herself so much for thinking that about him, because she only spoke the truth of reality to him, he is in fact just another normal guy, and he gave up many things of his own accord, he fell in love and then let go of the girl for her decision. So she didn't need to blame herself so much, and after saying that he turns to leave, but his sister says that this is wrong to happen, we can't give up on someone we like, because we run the risk of collapsing, and she doesn't want to let this happen to him. Because giving up on a girl he's loved for years is something that shouldn't be done, Keed also says she will stop making depressing comments about him, in fact she says she'll be careful not to. And he picks up that specific phrase to say that he won't feel confident with her talking that way, because she can't be truly kind, but he accepts that fact, after all they are brothers. He also talks about her being a sister who asks for his work and in the end doesn't say thank you, in addition to getting home and sprawling on the sofa as if she owns the place, and in the end, he says that if it wasn't like that, she would would not be the sister he knows and likes very much. And being nice at this point in the game would just be weird and boring, and then his kid tells him that this is his last chance to have a nice sister, and in the middle of the conversation, Aika and Kay show up, and Aika gets mad at the way Wataru spoke to his sister, and forces him to apologize. And Wataru asks why she made all this effort to go to the terrace to see what he was doing, at that moment she realizes that she was the one who became his stalker, and then says that it's just a coincidence and leaves running again. And his sister also decides to leave, but before that she calls him an idiot, it seems that everything is back to normal in their relationship, and on the way back to the house, Wataru notices that Aika was acting strange that day. Well, he comes home and apologizes to his sister for being rude out there on the terrace, and hands her a snack, and Keith starts complaining to him while eating, in which the crazy guy doesn't understand anything and asks for the snack back, and since she doesn't, he appeals and starts recording her eating, and then takes a few sticks to get smart. Aika and Kay talk about the weekend that they spent together with the whole gang, and Aika is a little jealous that her sister has become so attached to her friends. And speaking of jealousy, Kay talks about Wataru and the fact that Aika was sad for him doesn't care about her anymore, and Kay believes he meant a lot to Aika, and losing him ended up messing with her. But Aika tries to talk it out, but Kay says that feeling loved is a good thing, but since he stopped showing his admiration for her, it certainly upset her. And in the end, Kay advises her to try to make an effort if she wants to get his attention again. Well, Wataru and his sister are having breakfast, and she notices that his hair is too long and with double colors, but the guy doesn't care much about his appearance, and decides to go to school anyway. His sister says that he used to be less slovenly, and Wataru on the way to school reflects on that, in fact it was true, but he only dressed up before because of Aika, but nowadays he doesn't care about appearance. Well, when he arrives in the room he greets the two, but in a mocking way, calling Aika a goddess, and that makes him get kicked in the leg, and then he asks if they got there all right yesterday, Kay says that they had a girl's outing, and then asks his faithful subject for some win. He walks in and waves it with the notebook, and after the bell rings, Wataru gets a message from his sister saying she won't need his help today either. And Aika tries to go towards him, but the guy gets up and goes to the break, and finds a place free of people, this is the best possible scenario for an antisocial to be happy, he is accompanied only by his snack and bars of chocolate. But that's what he thought, the committee trolley was at the next table, and Shinomiya goes up to him and tries to make him a more sociable guy, and tells him that it would be normal for him to ask to join their table, however he says he is not well. But Yuyu calls him to go eat with them, and so he ends up accepting, and in the middle of the conversation he asks if the girl who was with them had a boyfriend, but soon he gets a ear pull from Shinomiya. And Aizawa introduces the girl as Aya, a childhood friend of theirs, and Shinomiya describes her as an intelligent girl who passed on a lot of her knowledge to her, and seeing that Aya was very serious, Yuyu tells her to smile more, but Wataru advises her not to force herself if she doesn't want to. And the girl is real, and says that she was only doing that because of Yuyu and not for him, and says that he seems to be a strange pervert, yeah, it seems that he was better off being alone anyway. Well, the girls leave, and Shinomiya asks Wataru what he thought of Yuyu's change, and he says he was surprised, she is actually less insecure, but something caught his attention, Wataru thought she would do anything to get him away from Yuyu. However, she says that she would never do that with her benefactor, because he was essential for Yuyu to lose her insecurity in relation to men, he made her see that men can also be kind and good. But Wataru continues to be humble and says that he didn't do much, and Shinomiya tells him to have more self-confidence, because he is more important than he thinks, after all he didn't just help Yuyu, 
he helped Shinomiya too by giving that advice of patting the back. Shoulder, because when she put that into practice with Yuyu, she seemed a lot happier. And Shinomiya says he doesn't even look like Kid's brother, and he says he already suspected that she knew his sister, and Shinomiya says she's known his sister since second year, and says that Kid was unbearable back then. Well, upon returning to the room, Wataru sees Sasaki at his table looking all weird, and then asks what's going on, and he just raises his cell phone, the guy was being tormented by messages from his sister, but Wataru already knows how this situation is, well, Sasaki asks if his sister is cool, and Wataru tells him not to want to go out flirting with the other sister, and Sasaki says that's not it, and calls him outside to talk, Sasaki reveals that he is actually liking Aika, but Wataru says he understands the situation, after all it's normal that they like her, and he reflects on Aika being a girl far above his level, so for him, Aika would need to get a man her height. And for him, Sasaki can be that man, because he has many qualities, and besides, Aika likes him as he already suspected, Wataru believes he did well to stay away from her, well, the teacher asks Wataru to hand over these notebooks for Aika, but K shows up on time, which is convenient. And he takes the opportunity to ask her to deliver it while he goes to the bathroom, and when he returns to the room he sees Aika leaving with Sasaki and K, but when he goes to get his things to leave too, Aika appears behind him pulling him, and he asks if she forgot something, and Aika says yes, so since it's late, Wataru offers to accompany her. But before they leave, Aika asks him where he stays during breaks, because he always disappears, and he replies that he stays in the canteen or on some bank, and she asks why he eats alone, but he says he ate with the committee girls today. But what Aika really wants is for him to eat with her and the others, like in the old days, and Wataru reflects that after he walked away from her many things changed, now Aika has friends and is getting closer to Sasaki, and not to spoil that, he says he doesn't want to eat with her. Well, going down the stairs, Aika comments about this double color in his hair, and Wataru says that Swaverma had also warned him that it looked awful, and she tells him to fix it quickly, so Wataru asks her for an opinion. He asks if he it would be better if you dyed your hair black or brown. She says whatever, but if he had black hair when they first met, she wouldn't have spoken to him, well, since her answer wasn't much help, he combined the two colors, and got a dark brown. And arriving home he already applies the paint, but his sister arrives in the bathroom and realizes that he is doing everything wrong, so she proposes to help him. And she starts shaking the crazy guy's head, looking like she's going to kill him, in the end, she tells him to wait two days, for the color to set, well, Wataru starts to reflect on motivation it's the engine of our lives, with with her. Children can run around, fantasize about far-fetched stories and even fall in love. He understands that very well. So much so that he studies at an elitist school, where he only managed to get in because of his motivation to be close to Aika, but as that motivation he had ended, he doesn't feel so efficient anymore, so much so that his placement in school exams dropped drastically. But while he got worse in his ranking, K got better, because he went from 220th to 76th, it's already an evolution, well, Wataru goes to look at the overall results of the exam, and he's happy that Aika did well, but he realizes that she improved her performance after he pulled away from her. And he sees her far away, and realizes that the old Wataru would already be there drooling over her, but he also likes being able to be watching her from afar, at that moment Sasaki appears, and comments on their ranking, and makes that basic mockery of Wataru. And he feels completely humiliated, because an antisocial and strange student like him needs to at least be smart, and since he sees that he is losing to a guy who plays football and is still handsome, he ends up being filled with motivation to improve, and launches a curse on the handsome footballer, wishing all his passes were stopped. Aika and her friends plan something for summer vacation, and Sasaki appears in the conversation and asks if Aika intends to ask Wataru too, but one of the girls assumes that it is more difficult for Wataru to talk to Aika since she is now popular. But everyone believes that in fact it's just him who is really weird, and realizing that they are talking about him, Wataru leaves the room, and notices three girls looking at Aika strangely, and asks them what they want with her. But the blonde there takes a scare, and soon takes satisfaction with Wataru, saying she is a girl above his level in the sense of importance, and Wataru makes fun of her face for the desperate scream that the girl let out. And then her friends call Marika somewhere else, and yes, the girl's name is Marika anyway, well, after hearing all the noise, Aika goes outside and asks what's going on, but Wataru says it's no big deal, there were only three patricinias giving tantrums. Well, the next day on the way to school, Wataru bumps into Aika, but both go their separate ways, until a car drives towards her, and Wataru protects her by diverting her from a possible accident. But he arrives in class all soaked and sick, 
so Aika offers him a cloth to dry himself, but suddenly he falls all limp on the table and starts to fall asleep and passes out, and when he wakes up the teacher is already teaching a class about the Third World War. The madman fell asleep for good. He even tries to pretend he was awake from the beginning, but his head hurts a lot, and K pokes him to see if he really woke up, then the teacher realizes that Wataru woke up and tells him to go back to doing his homework, but the guy is bad same, and asks to go to the infirmary. Only when he leaves the room he falls to the floor, and everyone worries and goes to him, and then he starts to get lost in his thoughts, he thinks about concepts he had before, about how an adult should be, for him adults hid their feelings and always acted sarcastically about life to hide their insecurities. And then that thought ends with him falling to the ground and being helped by Aika, well, in the ward the girl says that despite the high fever, he didn't hit his head, and will soon be recovered, and asks if the two want to see him, they say yes, but Wataru is still unconscious. But the nurse says that now they will need to leave him resting, and orders the two to go back to class, well, Wataru wakes up, and the nurse tells him that he passed out and was carried there by his colleagues. And he asks if he has a cold, and the nurse says that when they measured him, he had a 38 degree fever, Wataru finds this strange, as he was normal in the morning, and then the nurse suggests that this is probably psychological exhaustion, and advises that he goes back to sleep some more. Meanwhile Aika is there in the room worried thinking about Wataru, until Shinomiya appears in the room, and everyone is already drooling over her egg, but in fact she was looking for Wataru, and Kei explains everything that happened to her, so Shinomiya decides to communicate tell Keed about it and then go see him. And then she leaves the room, and the girls drool over the egg again, yeah and after class is over, Aika and Kei take Wataru's bag and go to the infirmary, and on the way Kei has the brilliant idea of opening the guy's backpack to see what's inside, but Aika doesn't like the idea so much, because they aren't allowed to do that. Well, the two arrive at the infirmary, but the girl who took care of the place was no longer there, and when they go to his room, he is motionless and thinking about something, so they enter the room, and he apologizes for causing so much trouble, and Aika says he's been acting strange. He is silent, but his headache attacks again, and Aika tries to get close to him, but he screams for her not to touch him, because he didn't want to pass his cold to her, so the two leave, and it looks like Kei enjoyed seeing Wataru all vulnerable and weak. But Aika tells her to stop, as thinking that way is inappropriate, they didn't go visit him with these things in mind, and then, they meet Senpai and Keed, and they all go to see Wataru together, and they put their hand on his head, to see if he's alright. And Keed decides to get in touch with their mother, since he probably didn't, and he goes back to deleting, well, the next day the teacher makes the call, and notices that Wataru's desk is still absent, and Aika is with a slightly depressed face, it seems that he didn't like not having his presence in the room. And after class, Aika and Kei stop by his house, and he calls them to come in, and Kei soon gives it to Aika, saying that the idea of visiting him was hers, but Aika makes the excuse that he just got soaked and got sick because of her, so that would be a form of gratitude on your part. And Kei wonders how Aika knew where his house was, but she brushes it off and says that she found out from Yamazaki, well, since Aika already knows that Wataru is fine, she decides that she's going to go, and Kei leaves it to him a get well soon gift. And the next day, he's already better and went to school, and Marika is already there bothering him, until she notices Aika's presence, and goes there to talk to her, Marika asks for Aika's help to support her, her in her new endeavor, she wants to become the next student council president. But Aika questions whether a first year student could be president of the student council, so the other preppy explains that any student from any class can be president, in general, first year students are at a disadvantage, however, no second year student is applied for that vacancy. But Marika says that until voting time comes, contestants are bound to appear, and until then, she's building supporters for herself. Well, Wataru can read the situation well, and asks if Marika was thinking of having Aika as a poster girl, and that was indeed the case, but Wataru says that this is a very bad idea, and explains that Marika will be completely overshadowed by Aika, and people won't even pay attention to it. And Marika asks what he means by that, and our boss calls the shots, Aika is prettier than you, and that destroys the preppy, she smiles evilly and tells him to apologize. However, when they see that their whole class has shown up, the preppy girls decide to take the piss, and Kei tells Wataru to look at Aika, and the girl is all blushing, and he doesn't understand anything, and Kei explains that it was because he said she is beautiful. But he's tired of calling her pretty before, and asks Kei why she's only now getting that way with a compliment, and Kei says that the way he said it and the current moment was the key to that happening, and then Aika gets mad and tells him to stop embarrassing her, and says he hasn't even recovered from his cold yet. And seeing that Wataru calls her cute, 
and she gets even more embarrassed and runs away again. Another day of school begins, and Sasuke is at the blackboard solving the questions, meanwhile Wataru doesn't understand anything, and Kei is about to pester him again, but even she doesn't understand anything, well, Wataru goes out to the school cafeteria. And on the way Yu Yu sees him and calls him over to the committee girl's table again, and she asks about his cold, but Wataru says he's better now, well, Shinomiya cuts the fuss and cuts to the chase, they have an important reason why they called him to that table. Shinomiya asks if he would be interested in being part of the morals and discipline committee, he is surprised and says that he doesn't feel prepared for something like that, Shinomiya then explains that he will step down as president in the autumn, and they have not been able to recruit any students. Still male. And Shinomiya doesn't see so much potential in the girl candidates, because they don't see the position with the importance it should, they see the position as a status, and Shinomiya sees real potential in it, because he was the one who gave assertive advice to her that time, and so she would like him to support the committee. And then Wataru says that these changes won't happen until the second quarter, and Shinomiya says that he already wanted to let him know, so he can think calmly, and he reflects to himself on never having been summoned so strongly to do something important, until which Yu Yu takes in his hands and wishes him good luck. So he is startled by this sudden physical contact and he pulls away abruptly, and the other two girls already frown, and seeing that he made a mistake, Wataru goes back to take Yu Yu's hands, but that didn't go well either and the girls get away from each other. They get up and go towards you with blood in their eyes. And he already takes advantage of this mistake to say that he is not fit to represent the moral and discipline committee. Well, after that Wataru is in the school corridors, and Aika appears and notices that half of his hair is all messed up, and he remembers the step he took from Aya, but Aika asks him to stay still and starts fixing his hair, and finally the guy freaks out and offers 5000 yen for the service which makes Aika mad and she walks away from him again. And then everyone goes to hear a lecture from the representatives of the Morals and Discipline Committee, and Wataru sees this new representative as a cute chubby who manages to do well in feminine environments. Then the big senpai appears, and both women and men are all wet when she starts talking, thinks of a popular and beloved girl, well, she comments on a school visit that will take place in the first week of August. And then it's the student council's turn to speak, and Wataru looks at his sister and feels a certain presence in her, seems to be an appropriate representative, and the person who will speak is Yuki, a handsome guy who speaks in a way sexy, again the girls go wild. Well, the speeches are over and everyone goes back to the room, and the teacher says they need to decide now who will be the helper on the school trip during the summer break, and to decide that she calls some students to the front of the room, they will need to take joke and put to see who will be chosen. The teacher says they'll only need one boy and one girl, and Wataru plays his first round with Tabata, a classmate he hasn't exchanged a word with in a while, and Wataru hits the jackpot and is eliminated right away. And in the end, the chosen ones were Aika and Tabata, but Sasaki proposes to stay in Tabata's place, since he has private lessons, but the teacher asks about the soccer club, and Sasaki replies that the team will not have any important games, then he can be a helper. And Wataru already looks at him with a certain contempt, and Kei says that the two seem to match a lot, and to disguise Wataru says that too, and Kei is surprised at how he manages to act so normally in the face of this situation. Well, the teacher dismisses the students and declares the first term over, now they are on vacation for good, and Kei tells Wataru that he was unlucky in the joke and put, and believes he will surely have abstinence from not being able to see Aika in the vacation. And when they leave school, Aika and Kei go for a walk and talk and as they couldn't miss it, Wataru's name comes up in the conversation, Kei suggests that they ask him to go out and do something. And speaking of him, Wataru is at his job at a used bookstore, and gets a compliment from the boss, he thinks it was a good idea to hire him, and he says he's used to part-time jobs, so that's cool for him to pick up the pace, well, Wataru will sweep the front of the store. And he comes across three grown men bullying a child, and he goes there to help him, the bullies go outside calling him an idiot, and when asking the child's name, coincidentally it was Sasaki's brother, his name was Sasaki Koda, he asks for the number of some relative of his, and then he welcomes the boy, and soon after his sister arrives. Wataru explains what happened to the boy and then the girl thanks him, and he gets all silly happily watching her, but he swallows his emotion and goes back to behaving normally, telling her to check her brother's bag, to see if he doesn't broke none of the belongings. And he advises Koda not to walk in deserted places, because it is dangerous, and the girl tells her brother that he was lucky to have been saved by a nice young man, and after arriving home he is still with this young man friendly, in his mind, it feels like his cattle roots are coming back with a vengeance. Well, his baggy sister shows up and puts the guy to work harder asking him to make her a coffee, 
he makes that basic mockery and snubs her as student vice president. And they start talking more about Wataru's job. He says it's a good job and he doesn't have an exploitative boss who wants to suck every last drop out of him, and that's a good thing. And after some talks about committee and student council, Keed says she heard about him being asked to be a member of the Morals and Discipline Committee, he is amazed and asks how she did that. And Keed says she found out from Shinomiya, and she already takes the opportunity to ask what relationship he has with her, and Wataru replies that it would be like a younger brother and an older sister, and since Keed is on top of these things, she also knows about the committee wanting to expand its male membership. But he replies that he is not interested, as it is a lot of responsibility, so his sister gives the idea of him joining the student council, as it would be better for her to have someone from her family in the group. And Wataru already remembers the crazy Marika and begins to feel that his sister has a little reason to want him as a member of the student council, but he still isn't that keen to participate, and Keed says she's taking the seriously bored team, and tell him to think about it. Well, the next day Wataru is at work, until suddenly Kota's sister appears, and thanks again for that day, and also shows interest in the store, the girl says she didn't expect to find a bookstore near her house, and says he was glad to have met him, and the guy already almost ruins the conversation with the answer he gives. Wataru says he was happy too and that he feels shy around such a mature woman, and the girl finds this adjective strange, so Wataru already decides to stop so his words don't turn into sexual harassment out of nowhere. Well, they talk about school, and the girl says who studies in a place where there are only women, and Wataru says that he is a student at Kotsa school, and the girl is excited, because it is an incredible school and with many qualities, with that she associates the school with him, saying that now she has explained why he was so cool. But Wataru reciprocates the compliment saying that Kotsu suits her better, well, the girl thanks him once again for the help he gave her brother, and says that his presence had a positive influence on him, because his little brother is playing in the street without worries. And she says she also learned a lot from him, because it was the first time she had so much contact with a man, well, she realizes that they've already talked a lot, so she says goodbye and leaves him a present, but first asks if she can go there more times. Wataru says yes and leaves the girl at the front, then he opens the present, but it is a shark-themed scarf, it seems that the girl saw a childish one when looking at Wataru. Wataru and the girl he met at his work go out for a walk, and enjoy the sea breeze, and a sudden wind hits them both, and then the girl sees that he is really using the gift he received, and Wataru says that how it was a gift from her he was going to use. And that makes the girl happy, and she reveals that the choice of print was in accordance with the personality she had from him, well, the next day the girl is back at work, and Wataru says that it is comforting to have her presence every day. Days. It seems that the times of chasing women are over, now they are the ones chasing our prota, he praises the girl's wrist accessory, and she says that her father made it, and Wataru is soon impressed with the fact that meet a university student who is on good terms with her father, as her sister is not like that. And the girl says that there is a shop by the sea that teaches how to make these jewelry, so Wataru asks the name of the place, and the girl immediately leans against him to look at the location of the shop on her cell phone, and he says he thinks it is stylish crafts then decides to go with her. Well, while he's with this girl, the guy is already thinking about another one, and yes it's really Aika, he's in doubt about the gift he should give her for her birthday, but then he comes back to reality and pays attention to the girl who is with him now. The two go towards the store, and on the way Wataru again thinks without confidence, and thinks that the girl is not finding his present so special, and the girl begins to show a certain shame in people noticing the two. And Wataru asks if it would be embarrassing to think that the two would be a couple, but the girl was talking about her clothes, she says that she usually wears this type of clothes just to see him, or when she is not in a school context. Then he asks what clothes she usually wears, and she replies that it would be the clothes from when she was a child, and Wataru asks if people usually recommend that she wear other types of clothes, and she says yes, but she wears her clothes from childhood for finding them cuter. Well, Kay plans to go out with Aika and her little sister, and the three of them go to enjoy an ocean, but on the way they pass in front of Wataru's house, and Kay has the idea of asking him to go too, but instead ring the bell, no one answers, so it's just 3 o'clock. Meanwhile Wataru is there on his date, all shy and not knowing exactly what to say, and the girl teases him, asking if he's looking for girls in swimsuits, but he gets scared and starts to explain himself, that's something that he knows how to do it very well. But the girl laughs and asks if he often comes to the ocean, and as we already know, the guy until recently was a creepy stalker with no friends, so his answer was that he hadn't done that in many years. And so they decide to go for a walk, just that then the girl takes his arm and ends up touching her breasts to him, 
the guy is startled and the girl apologizes, with that they decide to walk without those more libidinous contacts, and Wataru takes a good look at the girl and sees her two beauties bouncing, and comes to the conclusion that college girls are really amazing. Well, they arrive at the store, and the girl already seems to know the owner of the place, and the girl asks if the boy who was accompanying her would be her boyfriend, Wataru replies that no and the two start to look at the jewelry in the store, they they see some very pretty seashells, and the shop owner starts to explain their origin, but the girl already touches Wataru to make him aware. After all they wouldn't have so much money to spend on that kind of thing. They are going to look at even the most humble shells, and then he decides to assemble a necklace, and asks Wataru what jewel he intends to assemble as well, but he still has no idea, and in his thoughts he wonders what would be the ideal jewel for him to present to Aika. And the girl notices that in him, and asks if it would be a present, and the girl is already excited thinking it would be for her, but Wataru makes the excuse that it would be a present for an acquaintance who is having a birthday. The owner then presents a table where he can choose the accessories to assemble his jewel, and then the girl takes a pink shell and suggests that he use that piece, but Wataru does not imagine that it would match Aika, and the girl asks if the gift would be for someone he likes. And seeing himself with no way out, he speaks the truth, and says that it is a girl who did not correspond to him, and he tells his story with the girl, and says that he started to fall in love with her, but soon after he was rejected, however, he says it's not like this is all a bad thing, because he got better in his studies because of her. And for him, giving this gift is just a token of gratitude, and if Aika smiles he will already be satisfied, and then he decides not to stall, and stops trying to choose something perfect, because the important thing is that he gives the gift. Meanwhile the girls are having fun playing volleyball, and Aika is on the umbrella with a sad face, until her sister and Kay come back, and Kay has the idea of them going to that craft store, to buy a souvenir from that day. And Aika agrees to go there for a quick visit, and well, Wataru notices a painting of a girl similar to Sasaki, and asks if she has a younger sister, however, the girl in the painting was herself, only younger, and analyzing her outfit, Wataru asks if she enjoys cosplaying, only then she reveals that that outfit was actually her high school uniform. And returning to the jewels, Wataru tries to break a blue shell in half, but the stop is very hard, luckily for him he has Sasaki to support him, and when he remembers that the girl he is with is still a child, he feels the need to vent, and puts his stick on the rock. Meanwhile he remembers when she ended up giving him her real age, and as she cheers, her two beauties sway along to support him, and then Wataru apologizes for taking too long, but Sasaki says he doesn't have problem she was having fun after all. However, she asks him a question, she asks what makes him try so hard for a person he has already given up on having a relationship with, and Wataru also cannot understand the reason so well, but thinks that if it is for the good of the person he manages to make an effort. And says that when Sasaki falls in love she will understand that, and she asks him what it's like to fall in love, and Wataru says that it wasn't such a nice experience in his case, because until today he still hasn't been reciprocated. And speaking of her, Aika and the others appeared in the store too, and they take a look at the jewelry, in that Aika's little sister notices a painting of Wataru and Sasaki on the wall, and when they leave the store, they go to eat, and Wataru passes quickly with Sasaki, Aika even sees him, but it was so fast that she could barely be sure if it was really Wataru. And when Kei arrives, she comments about it, and Kei is already kind of mad, because they went to the trouble of calling him, and next thing you know, the guy was already there, and Kay jokingly says that he might be on a date, but Aika rejects this idea, most likely out of jealousy. Well, Sasaki apologizes for not being able to stay in time for Wataru to finish his play, but he says he couldn't take all of her time, since Sasaki has time to be home. However, Wataru says they'll be back there more often, and next time he'll buy her a present too. And on the train, Sasaki goes back to talking about falling in love, and says he's afraid of it happening to her when she gets to high school, and Wataru laughs at her face, because it's not something she can control and doesn't even know when it will happen, well, the girl falls asleep and sleeps, and messages start to arrive on Wataru's cell phone, and when the guy opens it, he was in a group, and then he receives a photo of Aika a loser in a chased swimsuit. a girl at school, until she rejected him, and he gave up, now she chases him, and talking to your boss at the part-time job, Seijo asks what he would do when his summer vacation is over and he can no longer go to work, but the old man says in the greatest tranquility that he will hire. By the way, he is already hiring, and so, Seijo notices that they have a sign at the entrance of the place and the owner says that soon, he would become a senpai, and that he should take care and guide his kohai well. And his enthusiasm for this is monstrous, 
and when you leave him to take care of things, someone comes into the shop and a thin, low voice calls out to him, and he turns and looks at the girl and feels that he already knows her from somewhere. And really knows, he remembers her from school, she would sit next to him and was the typical quiet student, and he then asks her right away if she needs anything, and the girl says that she is there because she saw the recruitment sign. Seijo can't help but wonder if that girl would be okay working with this, and so he goes to talk to the owner, who surprisingly already knows her and says she's a regular customer. And he's really excited that she's going to work there, too excited to be honest, and she hands in her resume, her name is Mina and the old man hires her without a second thought. Seijo asks if he isn't rushing things too much, but he says he already knows her, so it's okay, and he says that his wife will be glad to have her there too, and asks her to come see her. Seijo starts to listen to the two's conversation, but the lady tells Mina that it would be good for her to take off that fringe so she can work better, even Seijo agrees that it doesn't look good, but he feels that this is a hard thing to say like that. Anything. And then, when she offers to cut it and pulls out the scissors, he enters the room, wanting to save Mina. The lady says that she was explaining about the work to her and he starts to think about what to do to help her with this situation. The lady likes to help but is going too far, and so he decides to introduce himself to her, saying that he heard from the owner that she is a book lover and a regular customer. And then he asks if when she goes to read books, her bangs don't get in the way, and if so, what does she do about it, and she replies that she does, taking two hairpins and pinning her bangs to the side, Prota gave pride, thought ahead to help. Seijo is impressed that this is the first time he has seen her face, and with that, the owner accepts and lets her work like this, Seijo then just says that he looks forward to working with her tomorrow. And the next day, he arrives at the store greeting as usual, but thinks that because she is his kohai and is his age, it would be better for him to be less formal, and gives her a more casual good morning. He says that he sits next to her in class and hopes to get along with her, but he notices that the girl's responses are kind of slow and that she's almost standing up, sensing soon that it's going to be difficult to get along with someone so slow. And then the owner arrives full of energy, tells Seijo that he is leaving her in his hands, and asks him to teach her any hard work, and warns him not to think any nonsense about her. And he soon starts asking her to take care of the bangs, and she changes it immediately, he also asks her to adopt this style whenever she comes to work, besides he says that they need to look at the books sold yesterday and tidy the shelves. And she responds to him by nodding her head to all things but he says as long as she is with him that is fine but that when she is a customer she must respond with words. And he notices that there was enough to do, and soon then he sees Mina stretching to reach a book, he says that they have a ladder for cases like that, but she insists and says that she could get it. So Seijo says that if she trips and falls, he's the one who would pick her up, and asks if she would want that, but she coldly denies it with a disgusted face, Seijo is shit like a vulture, don't give a shit. And then, ending up there, he says that he just needs to learn how to deal with customers, and says that since the store is open, they could come in at any moment, and while he waits, she should just keep things tidy as he just pointed out. He says he will deal with customers for now and asks her to stay at the cashier, to watch closely, and reminds her that he still needs to give her something, going to get a badge, where it said she was in training. He threads a string and puts it on her, but she doesn't take it well, and he changes the subject, saying that if there's something she doesn't understand, she should talk to him, but she barely responds, she doesn't understand, Sla, Amina buggy. And he feels that the two of them are not getting along, and he tells her to get used to it little by little, and then a customer comes in, and he explains to her that there will be things that she will get used to. And that probably just like this customer who just walked in, there will be people just passing by, looking around, and he asks her to stay at the checkout and watch. Only when he was going to do something else, he hears Mina with fear, and sees that the customer he thought would not buy anything, buying, and to make matters worse, the customer is an otaku who starts to complain about not having a specific author on the collection. And he soon corners the poor thing with his talk, he starts talking about the musical work and says that not having such art in a place called Talo is outrageous, otaku is a sad thing, see. And then Seijo walks over and cuts to the chase, asking if it's just those two books, and he says yes, Seijo even asks if he wants me to cover both, and in the end, he just walks away with his purchase. He says that with that kind of customer, if you don't let your guard down it'll be fine, but when he looks at Mina, she's on the verge of tears, and then he takes her to the back of the store. He goes to the owner and tells him about the case, she found an idiosyncratic customer and ended up crying, the owner worries about her, but Seijo says he better not go there. And that a woman could help a lot more in this case, and then, a while later, Seijo is wondering if she could do it alone when he gave up, in reality, 
even communicating with her is difficult, being both employees. With customers it will be even worse, and then, he plans to discuss it with the owner, because he might have an idea, and then, he talks to the old man, saying that Ichinos is not suitable for this kind of work. Eli is surprised, but Seijo says that she needs to deal with all kinds of customers in this type of business, so doing it alone will be difficult and if he comes to say that he will take care of everything she might need, his wife would not like that. However, the old man appeals, saying that that bookstore is the place where she feels good and Seijo is incredulous about it, but says he will try to talk to her to resolve it, but asks him not to expect too much from it. And he's thinking he can't make her hate this place, for the old man's sake, and so he must be the one to say something, and when he gets to the door, he hears the lady talking to Mina. And he arrives there, with the lady giving a lecture rain her ear, and he reminds her that she needed to deal with the book, tells her and takes her away, and then sits next to Mina, and asks her to listen to him. He talks about the customer from before and asks if she agrees about him being a strange person, he says she won't be able to deal with all the customers as she first imagines, and she might end up crying. And he says that for this kind of annoying customer, talking to them in a frivolous tone would do the trick, making them think you don't understand difficult words might be a good idea, in her case, if she acted like a gal, it would work and he wouldn't disturb her. He says dealing with customers is hard and there is no right way to go, really, working with the public is asking to be crazy, but no matter how troublesome he is, you can't answer the wrong way. And he asks if she can do it, he knows she is not good at speaking clearly and directly, he asks if she can show that she is a capable person in this part-time job. She gets nervous about this, and he says that if she doesn't, she wouldn't be good for this job and would have to settle for the allowance her parents give her, but then, he begins to think that he shouldn't go so far with words. So he apologizes and asks only if she is willing to deal with customers, but he also thinks it would be better that way, so she would come back just as a customer and the old man could interact with her. But she ends up denying it, saying she doesn't want to give up, and starts talking loudly and crying, begging him not to make her give up, and he despairs about it, saying that he also just works there. And then he tries to calm her down, telling her to lift her head, and she does it suspiciously, the boss arrives and he tells him that she will do her best for the company this time, the boss is happy and sends them away. Seijo thinks the day's work still has to be done, but he tells her to leave that for tomorrow and just go with her. The next day, a guy from the morals committee who is also called Ichinos says that they haven't been getting along with his sister, but one of his companions from the place reassures him. And while she is in a completely dark room, she calls Seijo for a video call, and in it, the two are talking about her homework and Aika getting all dressed up. And then they talk about calling Seijo for roll call and he actually comes in, K notices he's tired and Seijo says things at work aren't going well. She tells him to tell her everything and he really does, he says that at work, he made a girl kneel down in Dejiza for him, and asks if he's guilty, making them both turn against him. He says that he tried to help with her shy personality and didn't think that because she is like that, it would end up like this, and he thinks he was wrong, but Aika says that in part, that's her fault too. He, like her senpai, tried to guide her in the best way, he had a reason, and while she is talking, K pretends that he was called to the bath and hangs up out of nowhere, leaving the two alone on the call. And he asks Aika if what she did just now was an encouragement, and she thunderates again, saying it was his imagination, and he changes the subject, asking how she's doing. They haven't seen each other since the beginning of the holidays and he's curioso she says it's true but he says if she's having fun with Ash Ida it's okay she tells him to get things fixed with that girl, and asks why her video is off, and Aika says it's because she just got out of the shower and while she was considering turning on the video, my brother Seijo just doesn't do much good, he says goodbye and leaves. And the next day, at the shop, he notices a positive change in Mina, she is much more proactive and helping with homework, as well as communicative, and when she does something he told her to quickly, he almost pats her on the head. He says she looks like a kid sometimes, and then while they're at it, another customer comes in, he just drops the book at the register and that could be a problem for her. But she manages to attend to him unexpectedly well and Seijo helps her finish the service, saying right after that she has changed a lot since yesterday. She says she saw videos of how to serve well and studied, and Seijo can only praise her for that, she says she was going to put things away in the back of the store, but ends up eating while there, too cute, SLK. He then looks at her and thinks that Mina really doesn't want to give up, but wonders why she's so into the job, and when it's time for a break, he thinks it would be time to chat with her. But he already starts off in a terrible way, 
bringing up the subject saying that she came today, but she even starts talking and he asks why she wants to work part-time. And she says she wants to become independent and separate from her brother, she says he's the one on the committee and Seijo remembers him, and then he realizes that the talk is already becoming family affairs. And she starts talking about how much she loves her brother, she says she loves reading with him, she sits on his lap and uses her belly as a support for things, mixing that in Japan never ends well, not moral. And Seijo thinks that would be relaxing and cute, but she goes on and says that one day, her brother took a woman home and from then on, the time they spent together became less and less. He thinks he shouldn't be hearing this, but he still wants to continue and she narrates that when she got home, she saw shoes that didn't belong to her family, she realized whose shoes they were and soon ran to her brother's room, to know what they were doing and when they opened the door. She doesn't say and makes Seijo curious, and he asks her to continue, and when she speaks, she says that she saw her brother lying down, with Yuri leaning over him, kissing him, this Yuri is a girl, okay. And so we end episode 8, with a story that is in 6th place, see you next week with my ex Gatto boy, VMJ, and leave the like there, I went.